In this video we're going to be looking at the differential amplifier, which is the core component or the input stage of our operational amplifier. And therefore important for us to actually know how a little bit of how it works. So a differential amplifier circuit looks a little bit like this. It doesn't always use BJTs, but it is a common device that is used. Okay, we've got two not pointing in BJTs. In this particular example, and in this case, both the emitters are connected together through a constant current source. Connected to the inputs, sorry, the collectors, we've got a couple of collector resistors here, and connected to the supply rail. At this point, we've got Two inputs and two outputs. I'm going to call this one input 1 and output 1, and this one I'm going to call input 2 and output 2. We've got a couple of currents here, IE1 and IE2, which sum together obviously to form I, and Q1 and Q2 up here. So this is a basic approximation of how a differential amplifier might look. It has a particularly nice feature that it can amplify DC, so it's got no lower cutoff frequency. But its particular benefit comes with when you analyse when you're looking at the voltages between them. So in what's known as common mode, or a common mode configuration, Input 1 will be equal to input 2. Okay, and if we assume their voltages, the voltages there are equal. Now, assuming that both Q1 and Q2 are identical, all right, so exactly the same transistor, therefore, IE1 is equal to IE2, which is equal to the total current there, I. All right, so both of these for a particular voltage applied here, greater than whatever the threshold, sorry, the uh, base emitter voltage, 0.7 volts, um, will allow a current to flow through here. Okay, so a current control device allows a current to flow through here. If they're both identical with the same input applied to both, then they'll both allow the same current to flow through uh, the collector emitter. So IE1 will equal to IE2, which equals the total current. And therefore, the voltage across, we call that RC2 and RC1, assuming those are the same resistors as well, voltage across VRC1 will be equal to the voltage across VRC2. And therefore, output 1 will be equal to output 2, which means that if we were to work out the total output voltage, V out is equal to V out 1 minus V out 2 will equal to 0 volts. So in common mode, I'll highlight common mode here, okay, the inputs are the same, the output is 0. Right, so that's what's known as a common mode for our differential amplifier. In differential mode, which is how we normally operate these devices, the inputs are not the same. Okay, which means that the voltage drops are not the same, and therefore V out is not equal to zero volts. Alright, so in differential mode, the same input is not applied to both inputs, so different inputs, not the same, and not zero. So those are the two ways that we can say that this uh, device operates. And in fact, one of the ways that we can describe how well this uh, circuit amplifies differentially versus how it would operate or amplify it in a common sense is we can actually provide what's known as the 
CMRR or the common mode uh, rejection ratio. And simply put, the CMRR is equal to the uh, differential mode gain versus the common mode gain. All right, so it's just the ratio between them. And ideally, AD is very big, ACM, oh, ACM is very, very small, and therefore CMRR should be equal to infinity. Practically, if we look at it in decibels, you know, somewhere around 80 decibels is very big. And so what that basically means is that if you have a good or large CMRR, common mode signals, okay, so where VN1 equals V in 2, okay, the output is 0. And differential, we get a large gain. So CMRR is a way to describe these two different modes that we can operate this circuit in. Now how this comes back to op-amps is that, that this differential amplifier circuit that we have here is actually what forms the first stage of three inside our op-amp. So if we were to describe the op-amp, BP, BN, with a gain and an output. All right, the inputs we have in one and in two form BP and VN, and the output being the difference between these two here, which is amplified. And we can divide this up into three stages. All right, let's make those a little bit more even. Okay, so. This is approximately equal to this diagram down here. First stage, second and third stage. VP, VN, V out. In the first stage we have a differential amplifier, which is exactly something like this circuit here. However, practically, we no, normally don't have resistors here. We actually have active loads formed by uh, other transistors. In the second stage, we amplify the voltage difference. Okay, so this is a voltage amplifier. We have a large voltage gain. Okay, it could be... 100,000 or, or something like that, but a very large gain here. And in the third stage, we are amplifying the output current. Okay, we're amplifying the current through the circuit. So basically, this is a current amplifier. And the voltage gain of the circuit is normally equal to 1. So this gives us the differential. Uh, operation. Second stage gives us the high voltage gain and the third stage gives us the ability to uh, source or sync um, reasonable, reasonable milliamps, depending on the op amp, maybe even less, uh, reasonable current from this device. Right, so our op-amp can be described using three different stages, where the first is this differential amplifier circuit and common mode. It's not normally used. A differential mode is what we're using. We then amplify the difference to get a very large voltage gain here, and therefore we get uh, to be able to supply or sync current we then have a current amplifier on the output.